you won't have any folders when you've just installed uh, the software because you haven't done any searches yet. Um, you can create folders just like you would, for instance, in a Windows um, Explorer um, or um, Finder uh, on the Mac. So it's, it's a way to organize your searches. So if you have uh, specific topics in your PhD and you want to do subtopics in your PhD and you want to do a literature search on all of these topics, you can create um, a folder for each topic. Or if um, you want to follow up on research uh, of particular authors um, in the field and you want to create a, a list of key authors in the field, you can create a folder for that. You can do anything you want. You can also create subfolders. Um, that's um, one here, um, for instance, on a research project I've done where I follow the development of um, the literature over a long period and I've created folders for every month that I conducted the searches. So you can do this flexibly. So that means you can keep your literature review organized. You don't have to do this all in the beginning. Um, you can just do your searches and then create the folders later and um, drop the searches in the folders or reorganize the folders. So don't worry about creating, uh, having to create a folder structure from the beginning. So basically uh, what Publish or Perish is, is just an interface to specific data sources. So Publish or Perish doesn't have any articles in itself. It's just an interface to search for particular data sources. There are a couple of different data sources you can um, search. Some of them um, are free and that you can use them without registering. There are others um, that you can use for free, but you need to first create um, an account and get a key to be able to use those. These are Microsoft Academic and Scopus. If you go to the help file for Publish or Perish, you will find how to do this. Uh, I can do these searches because I have the key, so I might show one or two, but you might not be able to do it yourself on your own computer if you haven't um, asked for a key yet. This is free, you don't pay for it. It only takes a few minutes, so it's not difficult, but you just need to do it. Then there is one particular source, the Web of Science, uh, that you can only use if um, your university has a subscription. So that's the, the, the um, seven different data sources. Um, we have recently added PubMed. So if you're doing a research in um, um, the life sciences and medicine, that might be a very useful data source. If you're do, doing research outside those disciplines, then don't bother with PubMed because it only includes uh, research in that particular area. The other data sources, Crossref, Google Scholar, Microsoft Academic, and Scopus, include literature in every single discipline. However, Scopus and the Web of Science are a bit more restricted in the number of journals they include in their databases. Um, Google Scholar and Microsoft Academic cover a lot more journals than Scopus or the Web of Science. And Google Scholar and Microsoft Academic also cover, um, to some extent, at least books and book chapters and conference papers. Google Scholar is the data source that covers the most sources. Then after that, Microsoft Academic, then Scopus, Crossref, and the Web of Science are probably relatively similar. Um, if you work in the sciences or in the life sciences, then there won't be a huge amount of difference between the different data sources in terms of the level of coverage. But if you work in the social sciences or arts and humanities, then Google Scholar and Microsoft Academic will have a lot more coverage than Scopus and the Web of Science. Okay, so there's a lot of different sources, searches you can do um, with um, Publish or Perish. 
Um, and I'm going to start um, with um, Google Scholar because that's the one that many of you will be quite familiar with um, in the web interface. And you can see that you can do a search for a particular author. You can do a search for a particular publication. That means a journal or a book. You can search um, for words, keywords that needs to be uh, included in the title. And you can search for keywords that are included in the title abstract or anywhere else in the article.